So to do this seagull, I first sketched it out onto my watercolor paper, and I'm using 300 pound watercolor paper. Then I took my water brush and I applied masking fluid, just an outline around the bird, and then I did the surf where the surf is breaking onto the beach, and I just did irregular dots until I got the surf done. And once that was done, I let that dry completely. And after it was dry, I went ahead, I got some brown and blue paint. I wet down that background. So we're doing wet and wet. I mixed the brown and the blue, and I just added a wash over that made sure that the masking fluid is completely dry or you'll have a mess don't don't do this over wet masking fluid give it at least 20 minutes to dry so i've got that layer down and then we're going to go to the sand and with the sand i did the same thing oh i first i added a little bit of yellow so that you could see the illusion that you could see the bottom of the ocean or the sand through that little bit of water there that was washing up on the beach so i added that yellow and it was time to do the beach sand. So of course I went ahead and wet it with clear water. I got my brown mixture, it was a little bit of yellow and blue with a little um, mixed together um, in a kind of a light sandy color and a little bit of red in there just to balance it out so that it wouldn't get too green. And I just applied that to the, wa the wet wash that I put on the paper first, that clear water. And then I'm just coming back and applying that um, with my wash brush and just getting that all in there. Once I did that, I came back and I decided that I needed the, the ocean to be a little bluer. So I added more blue while it was still wet. And I decided that the sand needed to be darker too. I also added some brown in there with the ocean since I made it darker. I went with brown instead of the yellow just so that you could see the ground underneath the water. So I took some brown and blue and I mixed it together with a little bit of red and got this kind of grayish browny sandy color. I'm also adding a little yellow here and there just to brighten it up in some spots and I went ahead and I covered that whole area of the sand. I was very careful not to get any on the, the seagull. Let that dry. Then I came while that was drying. I came back up to the ocean. I did a purpley gray mixture and created the shadows underneath where the surf was breaking onto the beach. Just creating those shadows. And wherever the little um, white caps, I shaded those in and just added a few little horizontal, horizontal lines all the way across. I'm just showing you a section here, but I added some horizontal lines all the way across to make it look like ripples in the water. Then I came back and started adding some shadows to the white caps behind the surf. And um, I just thought about how the peaks and the valleys of the waves would look and I just made my brush strokes in that direction. I painted right through some of those white areas and just made it look like it was a wavy ocean back there. I'm using a number two brush to get that done. Just really fine lines and the whole time just thinking about how the ocean moves and shifts and waves just to try to get that effect. And I varied all my colors. I had some brown and some blue and some red all up there mixed together with a little bit of yellow and I varied the colors. Next up, I removed all of the masking fluid from the bird except for his eye. And I'm just doing the beak with this dark brown color and it was just a dark brown and dark blue mixture. And I'm just painting around the highlights. I'm leaving his beak, leaving the highlights there, painting around his eye. Now I've just wet the paper and then I came back into the mixture with a damp dry brush and just dropped that mixture to make little dots on the back of his head. And I wanted them to be soft. I didn't want them to be have hard edges so that's why I wet the paper first. And I brought some of the dots down around his chin. And some of the lines and shadows around his eyes I came back in and put those in until we got him finished. His head was pretty good. I darkened up some areas where it needed more shadow. Was really careful with the highlights to paint around them and leave those light on his beak. 
and then I just kind of blended it in I didn't want the highlights to be too white and added a little bit of shadowing I removed his the white the um, highlight of his eye and darkened his eye in around it made the highlight smaller then I took a light purpley gray and I went up his wing to show the shadow but I left a, a white rim so that his that would show the highlight and a dark edge on the back side of that stroke and then I just started painting in some feather shapes and I changed up the color some I mixed the colors up with some browns and yellows and grays and just painted the feather shapes in as I went up his wing and I left little spaces of white in between to give the give them some separation and I got some blue and some dark brown and made this nice dark color for the tips of his wing feathers added in some of the brown and let that mix wet into wet it was a really pretty effect and just kept adding the dark to the tip and then the brown as it went down the shaft of the feather and then I came back with some medium gray added a little bit of blue a little bit of brown to get kind of a medium gray and I came back and painted in some more of his feather shapes with that darker gray and I'm being careful to leave some white spaces just so that it looks like um, either the vein of the feather or the feathers are separated there it just gives it some texture I'm adding another layer of the dark and just coming in here after it dried that was dried and I'm just making another layer over the dark and coming in with a wet brush and just blending out those around the edges so that it won't be a harsh hard line and taking my paper towel where I have too much water and just dabbing that up a little bit and I'm just adding a few more shadows here and shapes on the feathers making sure that I left a little bit of white now I'm gonna work on his body and his wing that's facing us and I'm just taking a really pale uh, purpley gray and I'm just painting in the shapes of the shadows looking at my reference photo and just getting those shapes in there and I'm coming back with a little bit of the mixture of brown a dark brown and the blue but this time it has more brown than blue and I'm coming in there and painting those feathers the tip feathers of this wing they're a little bit lighter because we're looking at the underside I'm leaving a little bit of white area to look like the vein of the feather and darkening it up with some shadows here and there to give it some texture and some interest I'm going to keep adding the feathers using the same exact mixture that I used for the top feather. All of the feathers will have that same brownish um, blue with a little bit more brown than blue so that it stays on the brown side. And then I'm just going to start adding a little bit of feather shapes around and change up the color. I changed up the color with some of the lighter purples, purpley gray. Darkened it up just to get the shapes in. I'm not trying to get a lot of detail. And I came back and put that last feather in. This one I did a little lighter with a lot more water in it and because I wanted it to have some white uh, lighter spots in it. So I've got those. I'm gonna um, go ahead and look at that and decided that I needed just a little bit of shadow. So I went ahead while it was still wet and put in some darker areas. Now while that's drying, I'm going to come back with a darker gray, purpley gray, and start adding more feather shapes over the shapes that I just did earlier. And it's already dry by now, so they're not, it's not a wet and wet. We're still doing wet on dry, and we're just making shapes with our brush. We're not trying to get too detailed or too fancy. It's all about just getting the shapes in there. Finished off the tail with the same thing with the pale gray. Then we got the same exact mixture that we did for the beak, only we've watered it down slightly and that's what we're putting on the feet. And we're just painting those in and then coming back with a little bit of a darker shade of that brown and highlighting around the edges or shadowing around the edges and then picking up in the middle some of the pigment to highlight it. And just adding a few more shadows. And the way I got that a little bit darker was I just added some of the blue to it so that I, to the brown to make it a little darker. 
Now that this is dried, I'm just coming up and I'm adding a few more shapes to it, just some of the light brown shapes and a few shadows, just to give it some dimension and make it look like the, the feathers are separate from each other, and just adding shadows and a little bit of texture. And I'm going to do the same thing with the gray feathers underneath the wing. Here I wanted a little lighter, so I scrubbed it out with my scrub brush because I wanted to leave that white or really light gray. So I just scrubbed that out once I got that done and I let that dry. I went ahead and I got a sea sponge and I just started sponging on some texture onto the sand. And then I'll just let it dry. And there you have it. The full tutorial of this can be found at www.artwithviv.com in Viv Studio. If you'd like to join, go there for more information. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Bye for now and happy painting.